The Pepperell Mill Campus is an adaptive redevelopment project located in the heart of downtown Biddeford, Maine. The sprawling campus sits on a 16-acre site with several thousand feet of frontage on the Saco River. 1.1 million square feet of interior mill space is spread throughout 16 buildings around the campus. As it stands today, the project is 50% complete. 100 market-rate apartments have been completed. 300,000 square feet of mixed-use commercial space has been built out and leased. Over 115 businesses call the Pepperell Mill campus their home. The utility connections of electricity, fiber optic data, water, sewer, and natural gas are extensive in capacity and volume, ready for connection to commercial tenants with large utility needs. The Pepperell Mill campus is located on the waterfront of the Saco River, looking onto the Great Saco Falls. By boat, it is four miles from the open ocean. By vehicle, it is two miles from two I-95 highway exits. The campus is 15 minutes south of Portland and the Portland International Airport, as well as 45 minutes north of Portsmouth and 90 minutes from downtown Boston. The Amtrak train station is a five-minute walk from the campus. The Amtrak Down Easter runs eight daily routes from Portland to Boston. Multiple public bus systems connect to the campus. The present and future of the project cannot be explained without briefly touching on the mill's great past. The Saco River Falls incentivized mill developers in the 1840s to commence construction of the textile mill complex. By the time they were done expanding the booming textile business into the 1920s, they had constructed some 3 million square feet of mill production space. The Industrial Revolution was in its prime. The mill was filled with machines and modes of power that were at the leading edge of mechanical technology. During the prime years of its success, the mill employed 8,000 workers. The company stayed in business and operated in the black for over 150 years. The mill's closure in 2009 marked the end of the industrialized textile industry in Maine. The mill's closure also made way for the beginning of a new era. The purchase history of the mill redevelopment project evolved into two phases. In 2004, Doug Sanford closed on a portion of the mill formerly home to the Biddeford Textile, a division of Sunbeam Corporation. This gave Sanford the opportunity to get his foot in the door as the behemoth textile company attempted to downsize. This phase of the project was named North Dam Mill. By 2009, the team had built out and leased 90,000 square feet of mixed-use commercial space, as well as completed 55 new apartments. In 2010, the larger opportunity to purchase the rest of the mill complex became available. The textile manufacturer had given up on its northeast operations, and the jobs were outsourced overseas. With the vision of creating a large mixed-use campus and the resolve to execute the plan, Doug Sanford and the team seized the opportunity and purchased the entire mill complex in 2010. Financing came through a loan from Saco and Biddeford Savings Institution. The local bank provided purchase funding as well as short-term construction financing. The construction team commenced work on infrastructure and the build-out of commercial space. By 2012, 81 apartments and 130,000 square feet of commercial space had been completed and fully leased. The next step was to secure a larger long-term funding relationship in order to fulfill the need for ongoing growth. This came in the form of Bangor Savings Bank. Through a partnership of lending with Saco and Biddeford Savings and Biddeford Savings, Bangor Savings led the way by providing permanent debt refinancing as well as a series of revolving lines of credit. Here is where the project sits today. Building 18 is 100% complete 
and leased with 55 residential apartments and 40,000 square feet of mixed-use commercial space. Building 17 is 100 percent complete with 60,000 square feet of commercial space and 27 apartment units. Building 35 is 100 percent complete featuring 19 loft apartments with direct views of the Saco River Falls. Building 15 has 30,000 square feet of reconstructed and leased light industrial space. The ultimate plan for Building 15 is a 90-unit residential apartment project to be built in 2017 or 2018. Building 13 is the new Pepperell Center. It is 55% complete and leased with 90,000 square feet of adsorbed office and mixed-use space. The infrastructure is in place to continue with the construction of commercial space on the second floor. 10,000 square feet of leased space on the second floor is under construction now. Building 13W is 50% leased to the Banded Horn Brewery, Round Turn Distillery, and the Saco River Dye House. The second floor is open and connected to the new second floor lobby of the Pepperell Center ready for tenant improvement work. Building 12 is vacant and consists of 40,000 square feet of quality open space with gorgeous views of the Saco River and the Falls. More mixed-use commercial space is planned for number 12 in the near future. Building 11 has municipal approvals for a 72-unit affordable senior housing project planned for construction in 2017. Building 10 is vacant and ready for retrofit into 60,000 square feet of commercial and light industrial space. Building 9, known as the Spencer Building, is 66% built out and leased to various office users. Building 30 is a unique standalone building ready for office occupancy. Building 19 and 20 are slated to be converted into a 62 room boutique industrial style hotel, function facility, and high quality restaurant. Building 36 is planned for high security, climate controlled storage, and other storage applications, as well as 13,000 square feet of retail space on the first floor. Building 37, the former powerhouse of the entire mill district in Saco and Biddeford, is a true gem as it sits directly on the Saco River. The building is currently 40% occupied by a high quality vintage car dealership. The long term plan is to house the planned combined heat and power energy plant. Additional space will be available to any of the possible mixed commercial uses, seeking truly unique mill space on the water. As the project progresses and more space is completed, the various mixed uses are strengthened by one another as more people occupy and do business on campus. It is this value-enhancing growth that fosters accelerated development on the campus. The Mill Project has quickly become well known as an incubator and startup location in the region. Several businesses have started with small incubator space and have grown into larger space upon needing to expand. A prime example is Hyperlite Mountain Gear. Once a small cut and sew shop occupying 1,000 square feet in Building 18, Hyperlite now occupies a full 12,000 square feet of production space and has 17 employees. The ability of the project to grow tenants as needed is a real asset to commercial tenant retention. The present course and momentum of the project makes the future easy to foresee. Master plan approvals are in place to proceed with the completion of the planned uses of the vacant spaces that remain. The master plan approval achieved this past summer through the Biddeford Planning Board was a big step in solidifying the final path and timeline for project completion. 
The master plan approval makes easy the steps to procuring future building permits for the repurposing of the remaining vacant space. This allows the development team to be prompt with the delivery of completed space to a commercial customer. Promises of schedule are made and promises are kept. During the era of aggressive mill expansion, the automobile had not yet been invented. The concept of the modern-day parking lot was not part of the textile mill developer's master plan. As a result, one of the redevelopment's primary challenges is parking accommodation. Through a thoughtful and imaginative parking management plan, the campus has been able to provide enough parking to date. Unfortunately, part of the parking management plan called for the demolition of one of our mill buildings. The direct effect of demolition is the loss of rental revenues. But more critically, building demolition causes the loss of real estate tax revenue, not for five years, not for 10 or 20 years, but forever. The remaining vacant space on the campus can qualify for both the state and federal historic tax credit programs. The program, administered by the National Park Service, provides great financial incentive to rehabilitate existing building stock of historical significance. It is a highly effective financial resource for the project. Over the next two years, the development team will put into place other projects and initiatives to make the Pepperell Mill campus a complete and cohesive project. In response to recent growth trends and clear economic demand, the Pepperell Mill campus is planning to move forward with the construction of a planned 61-room industrial-style boutique hotel. Intentionally avoiding the big box brands, the Spencer, will offer the highest quality product in the market, yet will maintain an affordable price point. The hotel is named after Francis Spencer, the inventor of the non-woven Velux material, and generally considered as the man who kept the mills thriving for 40 additional years. As the name goes, the hotel's interior design will be reflective of the mill's great past. The accompanying 85-seat restaurant and bar, to be named 20 Mill, will seek to win the taste of local residents, while at the same time wow the hotel residents, transient visitors, and tourists alike. Twenty Mill Bistro and the Spencer will open together sometime in early 2018. We are currently in the planning stages of designing and pricing the cost of a campus-wide energy plant that will generate its own electricity, heating, and cooling. The campus will soon become an energy-independent microgrid, providing low-cost and green electricity, as well as heating and cooling, to our residential and commercial tenants. The proposed energy system will also offer highly reliable and redundant energy, the kind of reliability that large data users and data storage centers require. This high level of efficient and reliable energy will be an offering unique to the region. This energy plan, combined with a high-speed redundant fiber optic network already in place, represents the way of the future. The Pepperell Mill campus has joined with the City of Biddeford to create a public riverwalk system as an amenity to all. The riverwalk connects to various small parks and scenic overlooks. The latest phase of the Riverwalk project included a pedestrian bridge that spans the Saco River, joining the twin cities of Biddeford and Saco. The Riverwalk also connects the campus directly to the Amtrak train station and other forms of public transportation. On the cultural front, the Biddeford Mills Museum is in the process of building exhibit space and creating extensive on-site tours. Perhaps the greatest historical aspect of the mill is hidden underground. Beneath the mill lies a network of tunnels and lagoons that once carried and controlled all of the water used to power the mill's machinery back in the late 1800s. This was the original source of power for the mill and the entire reason why the mill was developed. The museum will be a great cultural addition to the campus, telling the story of industrial history that needs to be told.
We now have a cohesive campus on its way to completion. Approvals are in place for future development. The project is 50% complete and soon to have its own energy plant. The Pepperell Mill campus is fueled by a region experiencing rapid economic growth. What was once the classic mill town gone sour has been reborn as a city rich in culture and economic opportunity once again. The Pepperell Mill campus is a textbook example of urban-centered development. New urbanism is not a movement or a fad. Urban-centered development offers all of the benefits of efficient living and working, efficient energy and public transportation, as well as immediate access to goods and services, all a short walking distance away. It has taken hard-working citizens, a willing municipality, and several local organizations to combine their efforts to achieve the mutual goal of reshaping the downtown district. Today, there are businesses thriving on Main Street. The new city manager and council are planning and considering great initiatives that will drive forward and support the growing economy. The Heart of Biddeford, a Main Street organization chartered to guide and promote downtown growth, is leading the way. Engine, the Chamber of Commerce, the City Theater, the MacArthur Library, numerous other organizations, local businesses, the Mill District, and the Pepperell Mill Campus are creating again the greatness of this region's past. The development team is proud of what has been achieved thus far with this project, and it is our task to see this project through to its full completion. It's a simple question. How do you make something old new again? First, you honor your past while you plan for the future. And then, you get to work. You build luxurious apartments. You give local businesses and startups a place to grow. You don't just make opportunities. You reveal the ones that were already there. You reach out to the community. Give artisans and entrepreneurs a place to call home. You embrace the next generation and honor your traditions. And then you marvel as the engine of a city cultivates innovation. And step by step, something old becomes new again, better than ever. This is what progress looks like. This is Biddeford. This is the Pepperell Mill Campus.